Hi, Sammy. So your horse is adorable. I love his coloring and his face, uh, but he's just naturally pacey. So there's a lot we should do. Uh, let me just start this so you can see some of it. So going uphill, it helps to separate his legs. So you can see more space between them. You can see a little. can see a little bit of a V and that's good. But going downhill, the downhill makes horses pacey and he really starts getting pacey once you get over to this other side. The hard part is your horse kind of paces even when he's going slow. Some just pace as they go faster. So I think you're gonna go downhill soon. And then what happens is they just get lazy and they just kind of swing their legs. Now. legs. Now they're genetically wired to either just gait, just trot, or just pace. And that's what he's doing is he's wired to pace. So what we have to do is teach him to do something that he's not naturally doing on his own. And that's to separate his legs. So we have to get him to really separate his legs. So I'm going to stop it for a minute. So what I would start with, because it's it's actually the easiest way to do it is to start with groundwork. So I would start with lunging him over poles first. And I would, when you do it, I would do it five minutes each direction just to start with, okay? And then what we're gonna do to work it up over time is actually get it to about 10 minutes each direction. You're gonna set up the poles with just four poles. And if you can send me an update video, send it to me so I can see how it's going. But your horse might actually need more poles than that. He might need eight poles. And I'm gonna send you pictures on how to set it up and some videos. And what I want you to do is just walk him over the poles first, okay? I don't want you to go fast. I just want you to do a plain, slow walk like you're doing right now, but on the lunge line. I want you to do that same speed of walk five minutes in each direction. In the beginning, a lot of the times the horses, when they're really pacey like this, will trip. They sometimes fall over the poles and they can't figure them out. But each day it'll get a little bit better and a little bit better and then they won't hit him so much. So he learn, needs to learn how to pick up his feet and use his back muscles, his abdominal muscles. When they're doing this pace, they actually kind of invert their back up underneath you and they just swing their legs instead of using their muscles. And it's a very, very easy gait for them. So what we want to do is teach him by going over those poles to start using his back and his uh, abdominal muscles to help him to get over it and start kind of rewiring him to do something else. The other thing I want you to do is some trotting cavalettis, okay? And I'm going to send you videos of that as well. And I want you to try to teach him how to trot. So you're going to kind of do two different exercises with the poles, but you can do them in the same day. Once we can do that pretty well and we got him going along, then what I want to make sure he can do is from the ground, I want you to be able to do uh, lateral flexion. I'm not sure if he knows that or not. And then we wanna teach him vertical flexion. So you'll teach him lateral flexion first. And then if you could get a surcingle and side reins, and I'll send you a video on that, and I can send you links if you don't know where to get them. Or you can hook the side reins to your saddle. Uh, but that takes more effort and I'm lazy. So I always use the sur single because it's easier, but we want to teach him to lower his head. Now, right now he's pretty good, but because he's so pacey, I want you to try to get his head much lower. So I want it, there's the kind of the top of your saddle and his head is just above it. Sorry, I want to hit that. So we want to bring his head way down here. You have a running martingale on, but it's really not helping that much. So we have to teach him to bring his head down. By bringing his head down, we are trying to round his back out. And then we want him to relax his back instead of invert it. A lot of times when the horses are, you know, 
red and they're very pacey like this, they'll really fight you in the beginning. So again, it's much easier to do it on the ground with the Sir Single and Side Reins. And with the Side Reins, you hook them up with, there's just a little bit of tension in the beginning. And then once he's accepting it, we're sure he's not freaking out or having any problems, you're gonna tighten those side reins up to put more pressure on him. What'll happen is he's gonna pull against it. When he pulls against it, he won't be pulling on you because you're not riding him. He will be pulling against himself. And in time, depending on how smart he is, some of them figure it out in a couple minutes, some take 20 minutes, but he's gonna learn that the easiest thing to do is to put his head down and that'll give them a release on the reins. So what we're trying to do is teach him to pick his feet up, but also teach him to bring his head down. So when you start with the sur single, don't do it on the lunge line, but without the poles, okay? So the order is this right now. We're gonna lunge him over the poles. We're gonna do some Cavaletti poles also. Once he can do those wells, you're gonna put him in a sur single, side reins, and then just lunge him with no poles. Just get him used to that sur single and side reins and dropping his head. And you'll lunge him five minutes each direction and then repeat it five minutes each direction. So it'll be 10 minutes each side with a break in between while you're switching to the other side. Once he can do that well and he's not fighting the side reins anymore, then I want you to start lunging him over the poles in that sur single. So then we're combining it and that's really gonna help change his wiring on what he's doing underneath you, okay? Now the hard part is I'm sure you're gonna wanna ride him. So we wanna do the groundwork. If you're gonna still ride him, like what I you do with the horses is just groundwork for a couple of weeks and I don't ride him at all. That's the best thing to do. But if you can't stand staying off of him, then what you have to do is keep him very, very slow and just stay at a walk. And when you ride him, ride him in like a big 20 meter circle and have poles in it. So you're riding over the poles the whole time. And what I want you to try to do is just get his head down while you're riding him going over the poles. So you're gonna teach him lateral flexion and vertical flexion, and I'll send you a videotape of that as well, okay? If you say, okay, I'm fine without riding them, then do the groundwork with the poles and the side rein for at least two weeks and make sure he really understands the concept, then get on, teach him the lateral flexion under the saddle and the vertical flexion, and then start riding over the poles. So what I want you to do is constantly be taking this horse over poles, okay? So when you ride him, you'll stay slow this speed and ride him in a circle of poles for five minutes each direction. If where you're gonna ride him is not flat and you have this downhill, you might have to add even more poles on the downhill and go even slower. Because if you speed up at all, he's gonna go to pacing again. From the day that you start this training, you don't want to let him pace anymore. Because see right there as you're going, it's a soft bounce, it's like a step pace but he doesn't know that's not what you want. So if we let him pace or we let him step pace, he will do that for the rest of his life. So we wanna tell him no more pacing. So every time he starts to pace, even if it's a soft bounce, I want you to stop him, back him up, and then start again. So no rest. The only time we're gonna rest is when he's doing a couple good steps. Now here you're going faster and that might be just to show me, I'm not sure, but he's pacing and then you're posting, okay? So we don't wanna to post to the pace anymore because we don't want him to pace. If you wanna do exercise where you're posting, then we wanna teach him to trot and you could post to the trot, but we wanna get that after we start getting him to gait better. So no more posting, no more pacing. Okay. Now, when you do go back to riding him, what I want you to do, and I'm gonna send you a video on all of this, is lean forward a little bit and tilt your pelvis forward, okay? Because right now, you're sitting up, it's very pretty, you're a very pretty rider, but to help him get out of this pace, we're gonna tilt your body a little bit more like hunt seat riding to try to see if that will help him. Once he's better, then you can sit like this again but I'm gonna have you lean forward and try to bring your leg back a little bit more here underneath you. If you can, if you have a saddle fitter, make sure that that saddle is fitting him well. Make sure that when he sweats, you're getting even marks under that saddle 
because sometimes the horses are that pacey just because the saddle is pinching them. So that's something you want to check, okay? But once you start riding him, you're going to ride in a little bit more of a tilted pelvis position, so a little bit more in your thigh. And again, we're going to try and bring his head way, way, way down, okay? If we teach him to do that vertical flexion, you won't need these the running martingale anymore because he'll understand. But you're going to ride with more contact, and it's going to feel like you're pulling on him a fair amount in the beginning. But once he understands to keep his head down and then he's keeping his gait, you'll be able to go on a looser rein again, okay? So now here you were trying to get the canner and you kind of post it into it, which is okay. It helped him get it, but then see those back legs? He's all over the place. That's because he's so lateral. So he tried to get the canner, then he couldn't figure it out. Then he started to cross canner and then he missed it that time. But I know in the video, you got the canner before. When you go to canter, it would be better if you set up a jump and go over a jump or a pole because it'll change his legs. He'll become more diagonal and you'll get a better canter and he probably will not cross canter. So what I would do is set, once you get to that point, is set poles going up the hill and set them about three to four big steps of yours in between those poles it's going to be probably about 10 to 12 feet in there because what we want him to do is canter off those poles and that's going to help him to get more of that rocking motion so any of these horses that are pacey really need help coordinating themselves and learning what to do with their legs so we got a lot of work involved to try to get him to uh to be better but again, the first thing is he just doesn't understand. He looks like a sweet horse. He does have talent, don't get me wrong. He's just on that pacey side. So we gotta show him that there's no more pacing. We don't wanna do that. We have to show him how to use his muscles. Then we have to condition him to get him stronger, bring that head down, and he's gonna have some nice gait. He looks like you're gonna probably be able to get a flat walk. And then we'll either get a running walk or a saddle gate or possibly both. And then we're going to make his canter much, much better. So if you put in the work, the more work you put in, the faster he's going to get there. So if you can do it, I'm going to stop it for a second. If you can work with him five days a week, you'll get there much faster. I don't know how your weather is where you live, so that might uh, affect some of it. But five days a week, your horse is going to get better fast. If you do it three days a week, he'll get there, but not as fast. And if it's once a week, it's much, much harder for that horse to remember anything to learn it. But we just have to be very clear with our message to him because he's trying. He just doesn't understand what he's supposed to do right now. Now, you also had some video where you were doing some turns. I think this was it. So if this is his backup, we got to get that better. I'm going to send you some video on backup as well um, because we want to make sure that he understands and he starts. we start asking more out of him to back up a little bit better and a little bit faster. And then with your turns, I just wasn't sure if you were moving his hindquarters or his shoulders. Because here it kind of, to me, the way you're using your hands, it looked like you were trying to move his shoulders. So we want to make sure he does it. Turn on the forehand first, because that's easier to teach the horse. And then to teach him to move his sh uh, shoulders, which would be a turn on the haunches. So I, th I think you've done a good job with him, but I think you and him can be so much better. Um, it's just going to take some work. So there, it looks like it's a turn on the haunches to me where you're pushing his shoulders over, but he's just a little confused on what to do. So when we get back to that part, I would carry a stick, and when he's not moving off your leg, tap him in the shoulder with the stick, and if that's not working, take your stick in that hand and raise it towards his head and just wave it a little bit. Now I did see when you touch up on his pole, he doesn't like it so much. Now some horses don't like it because they have pain up there or they just are very sensitive then they don't like pressure. So keep practicing touching up there and maybe give him a little treat, do it on the ground and then do it under saddle. So he associates that pressure with a little treat 
and that usually makes them more tolerable to it. If he tends to chuck his head or anything when you're putting pressure on the reins, then again, he might be sensitive in the pole and putting foam or something under the top of the bridle will usually make it much easier for them. So as you start to do this too, if you're having major problems getting his head down, he's throwing his head or doing other issues, let me know, take some videotape of it so I can see because sometimes it's a behavior problem and they, do, they just don't understand. And sometimes it's a pain problem, which we can figure out if that becomes it. All right, I'm gonna send you a ton of information, get working and uh, give me updates. And then we're gonna try to get him to get some really nice gates out of them.